Hello everyone and welcome to my very messy office. I'm Marcel Gagne and this, in case you're wondering, is Cooking with Linux. And on that note, um, oh my goodness, this is the end of the bottle. This is always a very, very sad affair. But as I said, this is Cooking with Linux, so enjoy. All right, hello everyone and welcome back to Cooking with Linux. This is Marcel Gagné. And I want to show you what you need to do to get your Windows 10, your brand spanking new Windows 10 desktop running the Linux subsystem. So you can run a Linux shell, an Ubuntu Linux shell, and install Linux uh, programs and so forth uh, on your Windows 10 desktop. Yes, yes, you heard me correctly. We're going to run Linux on a Windows desktop. And not like, you know, wine under Linux, but like Linux under Windows, like actual Linux. The first thing you're going to do is you're going to go into the control panel. Okay, now I've done all this already, okay, and I started doing this. I was going to take you through all the steps, except that uh, when I get to the final step, uh, it crashed on me. Right, well, Windows didn't actually crash, but it said it was going to update and uh, restart the system. And, of course, as soon as it did that, it killed my recording. So <laughs> we're going to do it again, even though it's already done. So what you're going to do is you're going to go into update security, okay? And down here it says for developers. You want to click for developers. And then you're going to go over here. Now, by default, yours is going to say, Windows Store apps is what's going to be turned on, okay? You're going to turn on developer mode. It's going to give you a warning. In fact, let's find out what happens, okay? If I go to the Windows Store apps and I switch to developer mode, let's see if it gives me the warning. Now, there you go. Turn on developer mode. Yes, I want to turn on developer mode, even though it includes the risk of running apps from the outside the Windows Store, blah, 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 blah. Okay, I know what I'm doing. You know what you're doing. You are doing this because you need to be able to run Linux on your Windows desktop, okay? All right, so close... And then you're going to go down here, back to that old start button, and you're going to type in Windows Features. Okay, turn Windows Features on and off. I know you could have done that through the control panel, but we're doing it down here. Now it says, please wait. You see how polite it is? Please wait, please wait. Okay, these are the various Windows features that are turned on and or off. We're going to scroll down here, and way down near the bottom here, you're going to see something that says Windows Subsystem for Linux Beta. Okay, yours, if you haven't done this already, is going to be checked off. You want to check that little box over here on. And when you do that, you're going to click OK, and it's going to go through the process of installing the Linux subsystem, and then the system will reboot. Okay, so the system will reboot once that's done, and you will have the Windows, the uh, Linux subsystem installed. All right, now the next thing we're going to do is we're going to go down here to the Windows Start button again, and we are going to type CMD. Yes, the command prompt. And we're going to go to the command prompt, and we're going to type BASH, as in the Born Again Shell, or the Linux Shell. And this says, this will install Ubuntu on Windows. Distributed by Canonical, the makers of Ubuntu, oddly enough. Type Y to continue. All right, we're typing Y, downloading from the Windows Store. There we go. So now we have the Windows subsystem for Linux installed using the Windows features. We have developer mode turned on, and now we're downloading the stuff from the Windows Store. All right, now that that's done, it says enter a new Unix username. Well, I'm going to use Marcel, M-A-R-C-E-L. And it says new Unix password. I'm not going to tell you what my password is, okay? I'm not going to tell you. See, I typed it. And I'm not telling you what it is. Maybe if you counted keystroke, you have some idea of what it is that I was done. The environment will start momentarily. Momentarily. So I have to wait for that too? All right. And here we are inside our Linux shell. Okay, so we have, uh, we have, you know, we can do an LS, we can do a DF and take a look at the, uh, you know, the, the drive space. Uh, we can type Cal. Cal 2016, we can get a calendar for the whole year. We've got access to all those lovely little things that we do um, in uh, Linux land. So let's do an a sudo dash I. And the password that I didn't tell you what it was, there it is. Are you ready? Are you ready? Apt update. Are you ready for this? Apt update. Whoa, ho, ho, check it out. That is so cool. We are installing stuff directly from 
the repository, the Ubuntu repository. Actually, we're not installing. We're just updating at the moment. So let's actually install something. Apt install. And we're going to try, oh, I don't know. Oh, that will install that little webcam app. How's that? Uh, what's it called? It's cheese. Yeah, cheese. Let's see if that works. Okay, it's just a, whoa, that's a lot to install. Okay, that's right, because there's no graphical environment associated with it. Let's find out what actually happens when we do something like that. What do you think, okay? There are a lot of packages that we have to install. We're at 5%, whatever. Yep, yep, you guessed it. This is another one of those times when I'm going to say, go grab yourself another coffee. Or, or better yet, since this is cooking with Linux, go grab yourself a glass of wine. Okay, that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to go grab a glass of wine. I'll see you in a few minutes. So how was that wine? Did you enjoy that? Because here we are. We are back in our uh, installation now. I grant you that I went way over the top here trying to see what, because uh, I wound up installing pretty much an entire desktop. And uh, I'm not going to try to fire up the desktop at the moment. I'm just going to see whether I can run this, this one single graphical application that I've installed called Cheese. Are you ready for this? Shall we do this? All right, let's do this. Oh. Cheese, unable to initialize libcheese GTK. Well, that was. <laughs> hmm. All right, you know what? Let's do sudo apt install Ubuntu dash desktop. Okay, see, I know this is insane. You know this is insane. <laughs> but we're going to do it anyway, okay? You know that wine that you were, uh, that you, were uh, you know, uh, sipping, uh, you know, back there somewhere? Well, I think you should go back to it because I'm going to go back to mine and we'll come back and visit this again. No, whenever. Okay. Cause uh, this is going to be a while. We're installing a complete Ubuntu desktop and we're going to find out what, if anything actually works here. Okay. This should be fun. All right. All right. Go get your wine. I'll talk to you in a few. All right, if you were paying attention to the little clock in the bottom corner of the computer here, you would see that some amount of time has passed and we've installed the whole Ubuntu graphical desktop. <laughs> Again, this is an experiment. I actually don't know whether this is going to work at all, but let's find out. Jeez, there we go. Unable to initialize cheese DPK trace breakout trap, uh, XDG runtime dir not set in the environment. Okay. See, it's, I don't know what that means, but we could find out. Why don't we find out what that means and come back? Well, hello, Miss Emmy. Welcome back. I've been looking around at how we do this. I'm a little obsessed with the idea of running some kind of Linux graphical uh, um, app under Windows. So let me just uh, close that down so we don't get the whole psychedelic effect happening. Um, apparently, I can go to sourceforge.net slash project slash xming, x-m-i-n-g, x server for Windows. So let's do that, shall we? Let's do that. Let's download that little baby. All right, you come download of xming. We'll start in three seconds. Two, one, zero, 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 zero. Okay, what do you want to do with it? I want to save it. Yes, I do. Now I want to run it. Yes, I do. Do you want to allow this app from an unknown publisher to make changes to your device? Oh, yes, I do. All right, let's see what happens here, baby. Let's close that window. And, uh, you know, I've still got my, my uh, Linux shell open over here. Welcome to the Xming Setup Wizard. Well, thank you. Thank you. I like it when apps welcome me. It makes me feel so good. Next, uh, let me see. Blah, 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 blah. Portable. Sure, that sounds all great. I'm willing to go with it. X. Sure. Yeah, do that. Create a desktop icon. Absolutely. Do that for me, will you? That sounds great. And for X launch. Uh, well, you know, I'm not going to do that right now. Let's just go poof and install da -da 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 -da. completing xming setup wizard launch xming all right xming is apparently running now we will click on the start button and we're going to click x launch now x launch we will use multiple windows notice by the way that it says display zero okay take note of that display zero so multiple windows next uh, start no client. That's fine because we're going to start programs. Uh, you may want to do no access controls if it's just on your local LAN. No big deal. Just uh, do it there and then click next and then you will start the whole thing. So I'm actually going to cancel because I've already done this. Okay. Now here's what you do next. Export display equals zero. Now I did this. Bad idea. Okay. Not display equals zero. Display equals zero colon zero. Okay. 
display equals zero colon zero. And now, if we want, we can start a little program like X clock. And um, we've got a little X clock sitting there running on the screen, right? Which we can move around and treat like any other object on the system. Uh, but I'm going to get rid of that for the moment. And let's try our graphical application. Cheese! And here we go. Now, aside from the fact that we don't have, that it can't see a camera, the webcam, this may not, you know, this is this is uh, giving me the opportunity to think that maybe something is actually working. So let's try this. Nautilus. Okay. Whoops. Naughty. Nautilus. Nautilus. And just like that. Is that cool or what? Is that cool? Is that cool? I think that's pretty cool. I think that's pretty cool. Uh, we've got all our stuff running there, but there we go. We've got Nautilus. We've got this running on a background that looks for all the world like an Ubuntu background shell. Come on, you have to admit, this is pretty cool stuff, okay? You have to admit, this is cool. Come on, come on, tell me. Tell me this is cool. I think this is really cool. Browse network. This location cannot be found. I suppose I'm really pushing it, but... <laughs> Devices, computer, there we go. Act, bin, blah, 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 all this stuff. This is cool. Come on, guys. You have to admit, this is cool. People, you know, come on, come on. Mes amis, listen, you know, this is cool. You have to admit. I'm going to go get myself another glass of wine here because, you know, I'm, I'm totally geeking out. I think this is awesome stuff. Well, mes amis, I could keep playing with this for a long time. We could try all sorts of different applications, but the point is that it works. It works. You can actually install a Linux subsystem or system on um, on Windows, and if you are feeling crazy and insane enough, you can do what I did and install a um, an X window system so that you can then run graphical applications on top of this thing. But the point is, it works. You can actually run Linux or at least some portion of a Linux system on your Windows 10 desktop. Well, listen, before I run off, let me just say that if you think that this is how I'm gonna be running my Linux applications from here on in, well, you're probably wrong and you probably don't know me all that well. Uh, this is really cool, but um, you know, for the most part, I think I'll just stick to my uh, Linux desktop. And uh, right now that's Maui Linux and maybe I'll do a topic on that as well. That's it for now. Thank you very much for joining me. I'm Marcel Gagne and this was Cooking with Linux. Bon appétit et à votre santé. Au revoir.